Hi, Charlie Black here. I'd like to talk to you today about VMware Tanzu Gemfire for Kubernetes. We're going to go through how to install the Gemfire operator and create the first Gemfire cluster and maybe do a management command if I, if I remember to do that. Okay, first off, there is some important uh, links here. Uh, you can pause the video to capture those. And don't forget, we have to have a certificate manager installed. Um, I tend to forget this, so that's why I put it there. Um, so this is just what you would go off and paste in there if you didn't already have a certificate manager. If you'd like to learn more about it, I'm pretty sure um, the Kubernetes documentation will help out there. Okay, um, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and download from um, TanzuNet. And what I like to do is just look for Gemfire, and it shows you all the different flavors of Gemfire that we have there. And we're looking at the Kubernetes installer. All right, and then we download our operator and just hit OK. All right, now that we have our operator downloaded, let's get using that. The first thing that we have to do is create a namespace to deploy the operator to. So you do that through kubectl create namespace. And I'm going to call this namespace operator. Um, you can name it whatever you like. Um, I'm just choosing it to be operator. Next thing that we can do is we have to deploy our secret. Um, I didn't have to log in because it was it remember my login for for TanzuNet, but um, the Kubernetes it's not going to know it, so you have to give it your login there as well. Um, the way I did it is through Docker, right? And you can go off and that's how it, I've differed this video from the install instructions. So let's take a quick look at that file so that way you can see what it looks like. Tanzu secret is what I called it. And here, you know, it truncated it so you don't see the full uh, base64 encoding of that Docker uh, uh, config JSON file. But you get an idea that I'm just deploying it as a secret up there, um, much like how you would just um, do, do anything in, in, Doc, in uh, Kubernetes. OK, so let's exit this. And um, so let's upload it. So we created our namespace, and now we go kub ctl apply that file tanzu secret and we're going to apply it to the namespace of gemfire operator okay now that we have our operator uh, secret up there we can actually install that operator that we downloaded which was at you know we deployed much like this uh, helm install uh, gemfire operator and the file that we have was in my downloads directory underneath gemfire operator and we're going to deploy it to the um, gemfire operator namespace that we just created and uploaded the secrets to One of the tools I like to look at uh, to inspect my Kubernetes environment is K9s. And let's take a look at um, the namespaces here. And I'm just going to go into the Gemfire operator. And we can see that the operator is up and running. So awesome. So let's leave this in the namespaces directory for the next step. Oops. All right, so now that we have our operator created, um, we can create an, let's create another namespace to deploy the Gemfire cluster, to create that first cluster that we're going to go off and use. So kube, go create namespace, and we'll call it uh, Gemfire cluster. Now I have to re-upload that same secret that we did for the other namespace. Uh, so let's just go ahead and say upload that same file or apply that same file to this uh, new namespace. And that's so that way it can download the um, Gemfire image that we have. Okay, so now that that's there, uh, let's take a quick look at um, the definition that I have created for um, for this to make my cluster. So Tanzu 
gem fire. So I have a very minimal uh, cluster de definition with basically all we have in there is the image. So whatever the version is, um, this would be it. And at the end of the day, my cluster will be called Tanzu Gemfire. So let's go ahead and apply that. So kube ctl uh, apply file of Tanzu Gemfire. And we're going to apply it to that Gemfire cluster namespace. Gemfire cluster. All right, and then I like to use canines, like I mentioned before. And so now I can go into that cluster namespace and I can see that um, I'm going off and creating the, the cl Gemfire cluster. And this might take a little bit of time to download the image, so I'll just speed it up. All right, now that we have everything up and running, this is the uh, it would default cluster size, right? So we have one locator and two Gemfire servers. Um, that's a minimum size or the default size there. All right, so now that everything's up and running, let's go off and just create a region uh, just to give you an idea for how that works. All right, so let's exit out of K9s. Um, and we're going to do that through kube curl, uh by SSHing into the locator so that way we can just easily connect up. So we're going to go into the namespace of Gemfire cluster and we're going to exec um, on the Tanzu Gemfire locator, locator zero. Um, pod, and we're going to exec our gfish command line tool, which is the uh, command line tool for Gemfire to go off and do some administrative functions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just connect up, and um, let's just take a look at the members that we have. List members, so we get an idea for what's in the what's in the cluster. And here we can see that it has the one locator and two servers that we saw from the K9's interface. So that's great. Um, so then we can go off and do a create region. And what regions are, are is the main storage concept. Uh, you know, you can think of it as tables in, in a database land, uh, except for we store objects. And uh, we have to give it a name. Uh, if I could spell, and we'll just call it test. And there are two main types of regions. Um, there's partitioned and replicated. So partitioned would be the normal place where I start out at. And that basically tells Gemfire, I want to go off and partition the data across all the nodes. So here, you know, without any redundancy, I have two servers, so I can store, you know, half the data on one server and at the other half on another. That's where I normally recommend people starting out with. Um, if you need everything on all the servers, right, for, you know, you have some kind of uh, heavy read scenario or not much data and you just have a heavy read read idea, well, you can load balance that those read requests across all the servers and that would be a great use case for replicated. Okay, but start out with partitioned. And then if you, um, you can have redundancy of the number of copies that are out there, so that way you can survive a high availability event. You know, there's a bunch of information in our docs if you, have, if you want to learn more about it. Um, so let's go off and create a region of type partition. And I use the autocomplete here just to talk about it. There's tons of different partition type regions, right? We can have it so that way it overflows to disk. Because you can have everything in memory, you can overflow to disk, you can be persistent, you can have redundancy. There's a whole bunch of other information out there. If you'd like to learn more, there was that link to the documentation um, for Tansu Gemfire. Okay, so let's go off and create that region. So now I have a fully functioning Gemfire cluster that we can have our apps go off and store and retrieve information out of that test region. 
Uh, that's about as much as I wanted to cover today. Um, we did quite a bit. We installed our, op we downloaded and installed our operator. Uh, we created a, a Gemfire cluster uh, and um, created a region in there. Great. Thanks for uh, watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments below. All right. Thank you.